Hey everyone, and welcome back to some more Analog Hate Story. So I've just recreated this uh, in a second save because I've decided I want to try and get all the endings. And unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to be a little bit of a douchebag. So, yeah, see, now I'm able to download stuff. This is why I am. Um, oh no. Wait, do I really have to hang out here for that entire time? Because that won't be fun. And that's the, um, hey, I'm just going to abandon everyone ending. Yay! <laughs> this is actually a nice font. Um, I'll be back after the credits to get on with the actual episode. And we missed this. Really. My good work recovering the files. Uh, I just spoke to the sponsor's representative and audio sound really pleased with what you delivered. Credited your account with the standard payment. Listen, you've got another job lined up for you. It's on a oh, okay. That went away. <laughs> okay, back to the actual episode now. So let's access logs. Look at, wait, no, we'd already done block three. We were going through the ones we'd already given her as far as I can recall. Dump. Block five as well, I think. Yeah, because she just spent her entire time calling her a psycho. Um, block nine is new, I think. Block ten? What about block ten? What if I give you the one? Um, I think this is you, basically a new wife. Uh, she's kind of more than just my queen. It's okay, so you're not actually her. Um, I appear to be a woman like you, but actually my personal appearance, I'm a computer program. I, I got that. Uh, I still really am. Uh, in charge of security for the whole ship, I mean, I was an actual official. I outrun pretty much everyone on the ship, save for the Emperor, of course. Uh, and by extension, his primary wife. So while I may have reported directly to the Emperor in theory, and I did others in the past, Emperor Ryu and Ho chose to let that sort of thing go through his wife instead. What this is all getting at is, for all intents and purposes, she was my real mistress, not him. We were pretty close. Well, as close as you can be to your better anyway. I liked her a lot. She was really intelligent for a woman and was surprisingly tough for a noble. I know, I know, it's a little weird, but trust me, with her it was pretty okay. She managed to be great while knowing her place. So yeah, like I said, I liked her a lot. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. This is my point. I remember those <laughs> admonitions. I know that word, but I can't say it because I actually helped her write them. I mean, I didn't write a single word or anything, but she asked me for advice. Mostly she was just modest. So let me see. I really want you to get the right impression of her, you know? She kind of wrote a lot. Well, no, just perfect. Don't let that cloud your judgment of her though, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not impressed either, but at least it means you'll be able to see what she was like. I don't- I like that she wrote a lot, actually. Um, alright, I've got three of you to see. Well, one's actually kind of about me, but still. It shows you just how good a person she was. If you want to see the rest of the ad admonitions, let me know. I can do that too. I cannot say words today. This is her letter directly to the Pale Bride. Right, so let's show you this. So, right. Um, well, you're not married, so I guess you wouldn't really know about this, would you? Even if you were, it would really depend on what sort of family you managed to marry into. So that's not exactly a guarantee. Anyway, the point is, it's considered fairly typical for a new gentleman's bride to get a series of verses explaining what would be expected of them as a wife, as well as just friendly advice. Well, the reason why these ones aren't written in verse is pretty simple, I guess. It's because the Queen had absolutely no ear for it. Honestly, personally, I think it's pretty endearing. But she was really worried that the Pale Bride, since she was a younger, prettier girl for her husband and all, worried about the Pale Bride. So she wanted to make a really strong impression. I suggested to her that she do what she was good at and just write them in prose. Since if she was as uneducated as I thought, she would be... Bleh. 
Since if she was as uneducated as I thought she'd be, and she was, it's not like she'd know any better anyway. Well, I guess that backfired a little, since it turned out she was so uneducated that she didn't even know any letters. Whoops. Anyway, here, just let me give you a giant infodump pass. <laughs> pass along the admonitions for you to see for yourself. Wait, do you have more to say about this? Well, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that letting my mistress tell the crazy bitch the admin password was surely the greatest mistake any man has ever made in the entire ship's history. Haha, uh whoops, I didn't realise you'd actually use it, as if anything could have possibly come from trusting a woman with that sort of power. I mean, I'm sure he was counting on her, um, counting on her not knowing how to use the computer, rather than being some sort of genius with it, but come on. Well, I'm sure you'll see for yourself soon enough. I say I don't want to touch the new stuff. Uh, was that block 10? That was block 10. And I've shown you, well yeah, you're the one who did this, I think. Well, I think that speaks for itself, doesn't it? That's what genealogy is supposed to look like. I hope that's more helpful. You didn't give me anything new. I don't care about you being bitter. Right, you've got stuff to say. What a mess. Leave it to her to clutter up with useless names. It's no surprising coming from someone as childish as her, as her of course. Okay. What about a cliche to remember? Okay, yeah, no. A base, seriously, what a complete and utter misrepresentation. In case it wasn't obvious, that's a completely liberal and messed up translation. Yes, it's a common phrase, but that's not what it means. What it really means is just male superiority, that's all. Fine, it's cliche. It kind of states the obvious, so what? I don't know where she's pulling this women are a base nonsense from. Stupid. Okie doke. Um, so I think I'm at the point now, because it's not obvious, that I'm going to have to write down the things that um, I'm going to have to show them both, which is going to be fun. Fun, 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 fun. Um, actually, how much have I, um, 45%? Uh, I've got a long way to go because I want 100%. Um, <laughs> block three. Okay, so, uh, laughable sit. I'm showing that to mute. <laughs> I cannot believe just two years ago I was actually excited about moving into the Smith home with my husband. Oh, how shortly that lasted. I find it funny. The first time I realised that I would have to com compete for his affections with every common woman and every Cortesian he came across, I was so shocked. The first time he brought one home, I cried for a week. My mother-in-law was furious with me, claiming it was my fault for not being enough for him. Now I realise the insanity of her reasoning, as if she wouldn't have already known that his son was simply that sort of man. The only person who had any right to be shocked was me. Still, I struggle for his attention, but now it is all but banal. Ugh, again, words. If the truth is to be told, there is something I would not tell mother-in-law, nor mute, nor least of all my husband. He does not even fight for his affections for his own sake. It is pure selfishness on my part. All I wish is for some indicated that it isn't enough that I'm unattractive, that it isn't sim uh, it isn't as though I'm <laughs> unattractive, that it isn't as though I'm unlikable. Any affection he gets is simply an attempt at finishing, fishing for that, uh, fishing that affirmation out of him, and nothing more. Oh, you've got nothing to say about this. That's good. Makes it a little bit quicker. Uh, proper damn gentleman. Prop damn gent. I'm sure that's a mute. Um, it's a fragment of com transcription of a fragment of conversation. Um, oh, that was how I knew shit got serious. He actually agreed to let me pick the drinking house we went to. My oldest brother only ever humours me when he's really trying to get on my good side. 
never a good sign. Well, I mean, it's good for me, but it's not enough for him. I'm sure a classy lady such as yourself wouldn't be familiar with this kind of place. <laughs> no, you know the sort. Uh, tucked away in an interior deck, so lots of wood furniture that's been stained. Uh, not intentionally, with just enough commoners milling about to give it a good background soundtrack. Oh, it's run by a woman. Nice lady too. So it's that sort of place. We arranged to meet up at the door. It's been a while, brother. I'm sorry I couldn't speak to you sooner, he said, trying to be polite. You're full of shit, I said. But hey, it is good to see you. What do you want? I meant it, he said. He's a bad liar. A bad, bad liar. So, we're here anyway. At that point, he only came by asking what we'd like. The only real thing you need to know about Jeanette is that she's around my age. She's got the biggest tits I've ever seen in my entire life and she dresses like a commoner. So you can certainly see them. Oh, he said. Fair enough. Bring your finest sojo, I ordered. Please. Please, she responded. You can't afford our finest. Totally not true, by the way. My reputation for being a cheap drunk? Completely unfounded. Honest, I have no idea where people get these crazy ideas from. Anyway, uh, far be it for me to argue. I just replied, maybe not, but my brother can. I mean, I knew he was going to ask me for money. That was obvious. I might as well get as much as I could from out of him before giving him whatever he wanted, right? Fine, we'll be sharing that, he said. Then he added, but how much to share it with you too. She blushed. Amazing, really. She's got practice dealing with people like my brother. But I saved her the misery of having to flirt back with him. <laughs> Do you really need more of that kind of trouble right now? With that, he let her go. Anyway, drinks came. We argued about the least definition of finest, our service, our service tits, and the good old days. My father was still alive and we didn't have to work out our problems ourselves. The biggest bullshit ever, I said, is that we were expected to be responsible men here. How did that happen? He laughed, and he was now drunk enough to start taking sheep shots. Is that why you've never been bothered to be one? Ouch, I said. Damn it, hurry up and pull me. Pull me more, I'll drink to that. He poured, but I didn't say anything. All right, so what is it that you want? I'm getting the impression that you have a problem and you want discretion, because you're talking to me. Right, brother? I was right. So where did you put it this time, brother? Put what, he replied. Cut out the shit, I said. We both know full well that all your problems in life will always, without fail, stem from you putting a dick somewhere you shouldn't have. He grunted in disagreement, but it's totally true. Was at least female this time? I swear to my father, brother was just about to prunt punch me. He didn't know. Instead, he just downed his drink. Yeah, that's a damn problem, he said. Um, she's saying now she hasn't bled in two months. A cortesium. I promised him I'd help. Uh, better, sh better she gets bought out by me than my brother, uh, the high magistrate. Less suspicious that way and involves. Oh my god, so everybody thought he was a bad man, like, but he was actually just protecting his brother. Believe me now, proper damn gentleman, that's me. I'll show you the message. Well, this is what I told him at the time. Uh, I could maybe, you know, dump without the description of her breasts. Oh yeah, because uh, she liked him and she was like, oh, that's such a horrible boy to describe him. Um, that kind of story is definitely pretty common for him. Uh, the part where he cleaned up after his family's messes. I mean, not the details about a moral common looking woman. And well, the drinking too. But look, that part he had good cause for. Sure it was his room, but you can't blame a man for that. I mean, the stuff he had to put up with. If you had a brother like that, I'm sure he'd do the same. It wasn't all that bad, really. We'd spend a lot of evenings drinking together, talking long into the night. Well, he would anyway. Obviously, not so much drinking on my part. But he's the kind of man who's still pouring glass for you all the same. So that whole sarcastic thing about him being a proper gentleman? It's not sarcastic. He really was. Well, he was being sarcastic, but still. He's absolutely, totally the best damn gentleman around. Oh, you seem so happy. I don't hate you anymore. Daughter. And I need to write that down. Mute. Already shown it to me. Anyway, for the past two months, ever since it became possible to hide in the house, hide that she was with child, Zhang Mi has been living in the, our house, and no visitors have been allowed to come in. It has created an incredibly awkward state of affairs. I can hardly stand to be in the same room with that Cortesian, let alone live with her. Until recently, so few words have we have exchanged. I didn't even know her name until the third week of her living here. That's actually quite ridiculous. My husband made me agree to go along with the fiction that child is actually mine, which, well, I've yet to give him one myself, so if that's time to make up for it, then that's what I'll do. I thought I was gonna, it was going to be so hard to keep that up that pretense, to pretend that this child is my own while the real mother is under the same roof, yet yeah, apparently not. As it turns out, the whole shroud has been absolutely, for absolutely nothing. After all that, the child turned out to be a girl. Of course, I'm sure Zhang Mi is quite happy since she's already been bought out, 
in hopes that we could pretend her son was mine, but an illegitimate daughter, well, who cares? It would almost be funny if not for the fact that it means I have to live with the constant reminder of how little my husband cares for me. Almost, but not really. That's sad. Hi, Magistrate uh, Smith Sangmin, uh huh? No, no, I just not scroll, it's click. Well, as the High Magistrate, he was one of the highest ranking officials until just before the end. I don't want to paint a misleading portrait, as I understand he was a very just man and performed his function quite well. It was politics that caught up with him in the end. It's like what I reported to my mistress. He may as well have been a good magistrate, but his family conduct was less than the pinnacle of virtue. How many wives a man takes is no business of his own. He never did anything illegal, but... Knocking up contestants owned by the court? Man, that's just bad politics. And completely unfair for his primary wife. Can you imagine? That's why he lost his position. Years of embarrassment in the family finally culminated him to him turning to a real liability for the Emperor. But it wasn't always like that. Here, let me try and paint you a portrait of him for you. I've added an assortment of vlogs about him. I hope this gives you a good idea of what I mean. Boom. We're filling stuff up. Um, sorry. Let's read this one. Uncle Daiho. Look, I'm sorry about our last conversation, alright? It's like I said to you before, you just caught me at a really bad time. So Jim was in bed rest and strict doctor's orders. I'm sorry that you brought your wife all the way to get her turned away like that. When I told Sojin that even given her well wishes on her pregnancy, she was happy, but sad she couldn't see you herself. A child was just born last week, a daughter. We decided to call her Minha Minhee. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm slaughtering names. And Sojin is recovering well. The doctor said that he would, uh, that it would be fine for her to see visitors next week. I'm sorry I got angry. If your wife's wife still wants to see mine or the child or my mother, by all means, you're welcome to visit. I really hope there's no hard feelings, Uncle. I'm sorry. They're on a ship. How far away could they really have travelled? Like, really? <sighs> Is it from Sang Young? My husband was out the house as he usually is during the day, so our servant fetched me instead to tell me that someone was at the door. I was in the middle of a conversation with Mute, but I had no idea I was, what I was expected to respond to that. How was I expected to respond to that? Blah. Oh, no wonder she's got something to say about it. What do I do? I asked her. She just responded in that usual shocking crass man of hers. Gee, I don't know. You could try answering the door, maybe? <laughs> just a thought, of course. So I excused her and went to do that. But with a degree of nervousness, I'd never done this before. At the door was my youngest brother-in-law, Sang Young, who had only met a few times before. Although her husband mentioned him often, I, usually in the same breath as calling me irresponsible drunk, I, oh, sorry, I'm clicking my pen. Seeing him did nothing short of compound my anxieties. Uh, hello, sir, I stammered. So Jin, he responds with unbelievable volume. It's great to see you again. Hope you don't mind me dropping in unannounced. I just figured I haven't seen my niece yet, and it's been forever since I've been in the old house, so, well, I thought I'd stop by to say hello to your daughter. I, I don't know. Sorry, my husband isn't home right now. Maybe you can come back later? I said, shifting comfortably. Oh, please, be a good girl. Let me come and see her. I'm not really here for your husband. This is awkward. I didn't exactly want to turn away my brother-in-law, especially if we just wanted to see, see baby Min hit high. But this is hardly proper. It wouldn't really be my place. Sorry, you'll have to wait till my husband gets back. I trailed off. He rolled his eyes and smiled at me. Really? Come now. You're a smarter woman than that, he said, and put his hand on my shoulder. This has now moved into incredibly uncomfortable. You really value his authority that much? He's my husband, I responded. What else could I say? He replied, wow. No wonder he walks all over you, if that's how you treat him. You've got a, lo a lot to learn about dealing with men, dear Sojin. Especially my brother. But come on now. This is a bad conversation for a doorway. Can't I see my niece? I hear she's rather adorable. I took a deep breath. I'm sorry. I said, trying to be as bold as I could. I'm going to have to go now. Sorry. I started to close the door on him. All right, I understand. Talk to myself later. Don't worry, I won't mention this visit. Do you say hello to her mother for me, though? Do you say hello to her mother for me, though? What? Oh, yeah, because it's not really her daughter. Right, yeah, that's it. Um, he said and left. My heart nearly skipped a beat when he said those words. I stood there in the doorway for a good while, because it's his daughter, for a good while, stunned. Even now, I still have much to think about. Not simply his uh, knowledge of our child's true mother, a great matter of secrecy, but also what he said about my husband. Perhaps his words were true. 
Did I show you? Man reading that, I just can't believe her. She used to be so timid. Thinking me of, uh, thinking of me having a, a uh, shock and crass man out of being afraid of a brother-in-law at the door. Well, it's all what I expected from her at the time. She just changed a whole lot as she got older. Well, honestly, maybe not, some, uh, maybe not as much as I thought. She may have gotten bolder behind her husband's back, but in front of him, that never really changed much. So, what do you think? Should she have listened, uh, listened to uh, Sang Young about being less differential to her husband? This is a hard one, because I personally think yes. But I get the feeling she wants no. And I kind of want things to be available for the harem ending, so. Damn you. Yeah, well, it's easy to say in theory. You probably think uh, that when women, women do get married, it'll be perfect. And you wouldn't want to be anything but perfectly subservient, right? Sure, it's easy to see if your husband's a good man. Sojin's husband wasn't, though. And well, fine. That might not be strictly the best way to act. Come on, be re realistic. Besides, he was just a brother-in-law. There's no harm in that. Either way, well, she did change in some ways. Would you like to show me what I'm talking about there? I mean, it was just a warning. It's some pretty scandalous stuff in there. Do you want to see? Yes, I want to see. Okay then, this isn't for the faint of heart, but I think you'll see what I mean. I'm warning you right now, it does get a little bit gross. But, well, well, just see for yourself. It's definitely pr pretty big fall there. You'll see what I mean soon enough. And I actually think that is all we have time for for today. Because if I finish this block, it'll be ages. <laughs> so I'll see you another time. Bye bye.